Hello, hi everybody, and welcome to number four in this bug series. I had no idea it was going to be four videos long, but it has been, and this is the last one. So I hope that you are excited to join me in the actual making of the paintings instead of just testing supplies. We're finally there. And if you enjoy this type of content where you're learning along with me and hearing my thoughts on what works, what doesn't, why, what I think about it. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it and consider subscribing. Uh, it'd be great to have an ongoing dialogue and to have you join me for this journey. In the last vlog, we ended with me making it to Victoria, BC, as well as making it to the Victoria Bug Zoo. I was able to take some reference photos there that I ended up really liking. And in fact, I found a bug I had never seen before, the Madagascar stick insect, as well as a leaf insect. And I was super excited to paint both of these. Okay, so that I was recording on my phone and my phone has been running out of space. And it's not focused on my face. What are you doing? Uh, so basically I just wanted to admit that I have been putting off making the relief on this because I'm so afraid of making a mistake and messing up expensive materials, which I'm usually not like that. I usually am like, yay, I'm using expensive materials. But today, today, uh, like I've spent a lot of money on art supplies this month, more than normal, and I just really want this to go well, and so I'm putting the pressure on myself, and I have a deadline, and so I just need to get in and do it and just say, I have one extra board. If it fails, it fails, and I just use the extra board. Okay, it's happening. I've picked the bug that I want to do, and I, I'm going to show over like this because I don't want to move my camera. And I'm so scared of making a mistake. This is not ne necessarily something that I always deal with, like fear of mistakes. Like I usually just go for it because I know that's going to be the best thing for me in the long run. But this is just so much more pressure than I'm used to. <laughs> so I'm struggling here, but yeah, we're going to do this photo I took at the insect museum. I often draw what I want on Procreate and then trace it onto a piece of watercolor paper. I also sometimes just trace the reference photo directly like I'm doing here, but I had never tried to get a tracing onto a solid surface that you can't see light through. I always just put the paper directly on my iPad and it works out great. That was not going to work in this case. So what I did was I pulled out some tracing paper that I bought a very long time ago and have never used. Luckily, I had the wherewithal to test it before I actually used it on expensive materials. Sometimes I buy things and I'm like, why did I buy that? because I never used it. And then I'm so glad that it was there just in case when I needed it and I didn't have to make a special trip to the store to get it. Overall, using the core dimensional ground to mold the reliefs went really well. There were quite a few rough edges that I knew I'd have to buff out with sandpaper or something. Um, probably the hardest part was tracing. Back with here, and the sun is streaming. It's so pretty in here. Can you see? Oh, you cannot. On the iPad, 
Yeah, I always get really tense while I'm doing it. Procreate's not really designed for this. I know that there's little tricks and workarounds, but I usually don't remember them. And so my image will sometimes move while I'm trying to trace it and I'll get really tense and stressed out. But it went fine. I was able to do it, get it done in a reasonable amount of time and move on to the more fun sculpting part. We've got different bugs drying in different parts of the room. Don't have a drying rack or anything. And then I've just been testing out sandpaper, seeing if I can smooth out some of the things. I don't know, it kind of like, it kind of left holes. Can we focus here? Not so sure that that's gonna work out great. But I'm gonna try it, different techniques with this and see how it goes. Okay, so, car going by. I guess I could close the window. All right, so it's Tuesday and I've been home from Victoria for um, two days now. And yesterday I got a lot done on the project. I'm very proud of myself because sometimes it's a little bit hard when I've gone on a trip to get back into the swing of things. But this time I was able to just break the project up into small parts and just do a little bit at a time and I managed to get lots done. And today I've sanded down the reliefs that I created and I wish I had had softer sandpaper, but I don't. And I was not going to try to go get some because that would have just stopped me from moving on with my project. I think it turned out okay, like we're gonna see. So I'm starting on the first bug, painting them. Yee! It took me a few minutes to find these new brushes that I bought. I buried them over there in that place you're not supposed to be looking. I've cleared off my table for the most part. I'm going to keep this for reference. This is what we're working on. And I want to use Winsor & Newton paints. They are the most watercolory watercolor. They're the least exciting. I've gotten myself some new colors specifically for this project. I had run out of this color in my palette and then these colors were never a part of my palette. They've all been soaking. So let's open up and get our reference photo. This one as like my color reference and then this one as the shape reference. Because I can see from the like what I'm wearing, how off these colors are compared to the other photo I took. Although that's pretty off too, my hand is not that red. So I think Procreate may have changed the colors and so I can go over to uh, my photos. That's what the colors should look like. We're gonna use not Procreate to try to get the colors as accurate as possible. We're gonna get started here and start our first layer. The back is going to be all black and I'm not sure if I wanna do that first or last. Um, I think I'm just gonna paint it first and go from there. When I was putting on the blue stuff, uh, it seemed like it was breaking. So I don't know if this is dry enough. So I'm setting this up right here. I'm just putting some heat on it for a few minutes before I start painting. Also, I'm a little nervous the color I mixed broke up and I'm just not sure if that's gonna match my reference. I think it'll be okay. I think bugs are kind of maybe more like this if you look at them close up, but I don't know. The rubber cement pickup that I bought at the Opus Art Supply store in Victoria worked marginally better than my finger, but not enough that I would have like bought it just for that. I was not sure how putting the light dimensional ground over on top of watercolor was gonna work out, but it worked out beautifully, perfectly fine, no problems at all.
suspicion. Now, I have a hard time evaluating it because sometimes right out in the open, just overtly racist in a way that I thought was over. I have been using Procreate to, to get a sense for what my projects would look like next to each other. Originally, I wanted to do these, but I changed my mind after taking the photos at the Bug Museum. Then I put the photos that I took that I liked the best into Procreate and I started doing the same experiments on them that I had done on my original selection of reference photos. Doing these experiments made me realize I was not loving the chaotic background that I had previously chosen. I had chosen the colors of the background based on what was the opposite color of the, or at least the opposite main color of the reference photo. In this case, the opposite would be pink. Eventually, I just decided to try them all with a black background and I just, I just loved it. I just loved how it looked so much better and so I decided to go with that. Okay, I thought now would be a good time for an update. I've somewhat finished my first bug. I want to still put the white outlines on it, but I'm gonna let it thoroughly dry and then see if there's anything else I wanna add to the green before I add it. So now I've moved on to the butterfly. It's the 20th and I would like to, I just discovered that the, I burned my hand this morning. I just discovered that it's a blister. I didn't realize that. A second ago. Um, so, uh, butterfly <laughs> problem. I had it with a back black, I have it with a black background, but I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to make the background dark enough for it to contrast the very dark brown of the butterfly, which looks black. I'm hoping I can make it work, but well, I'm not sure. After playing around and testing different colors in Procreate, I decided that a more blue-toned background would be best and then to go with like a brownish black for the parts of the butterfly that read as black. I consumed many, many hours of YouTube content during this project. Uh, my husband walked in on this particular one, uh, Am I the Asshole with Shaba? And here's a little bit of our commentary. Because a, a gold band that's quite simple is quite reminiscent of Are a you wedding gonna eat right now? So I asked oh, Jamie yeah. if he wouldn't mind, and if he was in any way upset about it, I wouldn't have changed the ring. And also, the original ring meant so much to me that I've kept it, right? And I've popped a little cubic zircona in the gem area instead. So to think that there was this gorgeous heirloom that meant so much to all of you that is now totally changed, I can see why you would be upset. Okay, let's read on. I told her I didn't think Grandma would have given it to John and Amy if she knew she was going to take it apart. I found grandma and asked her if she knew what Amy had done. Again, babe, I, I totally get where your headspace is, but you don't need to do this at a wedding. Amy's mom had told her that Amy had to have she's it resized done. and had the setting fixed, but grandma- What? Sounds like she's done me. <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> I think that's exactly what's happening, it's tattling. <laughs> Someone wants to be favorite. <laughs> <laughs> grandma! <laughs> grandma, do you know what you- do you know what she did to the ring? Who was the tattler in your family? I'll give you a hint. It was not me. Not that I wouldn't do that. Like, I totally would tell. I just wasn't like the one to do it most often because I was usually the one making the madness. We do have snitches. Really? Because snitches get stitches. Really?
getting down to the wire. I need to deliver these things in three days. I had cramps all day. I'm thinking, I'm thinking I can sit down and paint now. So this is happening. This needs to, this, this needs to happen. I don't hate stippling, but it was not in any way my intention to stipple the black on to the butterfly. I was hoping I'd find another method, but I couldn't find one. If you have one, please tell me what it is. So it, it ended up being my least favorite painting to do just cause it was kind of boring. I listened to so many YouTube videos during the stippling. Like I cut out hours of footage of me just stippling away. The absolute most fun and far easiest to paint was the Madagascar stick bug. It went so fast, uh, which was great since I had a lot to do. Um, but the background was difficult to paint. I had to go in it at lots of different angles. Creating the details of the relief with the light dimensional ground wasn't particularly easy. So I opted to try using the Aquapasto and I really liked how it turned out. It was pretty easy to work with. One of the channels I love to listen to while I'm working is Just Have a Think. I discovered them when I was doing all of the different videos about geothermal power. I like, I like the channel because it gives me a lot of hope for the future. It seems really well researched and hopeful. And, um, but I, I, I really kind of don't understand what they're talking about half the time. Uh, I wish I did. I wish I knew all the jargon they were using. Fully explaining what they are would take another entire video, which would probably melt my brain. But suffice to say, they're made up of 60 carbon atoms fused together into a sphere, and they're only found in laboratories or out of space. A sulfur cathode has a potential theoretical specific I was also in the thick of the Love is Blind season four temporary special interest that I had. I love hearing all the different perspectives because I know that we only get a small snippet of what's really going on in the way that they edit and the way they have to edit things or the way they choose to edit things on the show. I love listening to interviews with the cast to understand what was going on for them behind the scenes. People who felt hurt by me. When people say that, it's unclear what that means, but a good sign, she's not saying. Oh. Hurt and mistreated. Okay. Together. Before I responded, um, the first thing I want to say is that I have privately apologized to the people that I have hurt and mistreated. Okay, so re-watching this initial statement. Get. You gotta move. Yeah, you wanna be petted. Okay, I'll pet you, but not here. I am like, all, like, all the way better. My nose is like, it's really bad. I'm really glad to hear that. You wanna see me put the sparkles on here? Yeah, sure. So we're gonna do a little experiment that might ruin the painting. What are you gonna do? You're the third is tomorrow. Uh, don't do that. I, I mean, I'm, I don't actually think it'll ruin the painting. I'm just saying it could. What do you think? Good. To do that. Uh, there's too much right here. There's too much right here. Where? What do you mean too much? This too. It's like okay. too much in one spot. I'm gonna put it all this side, and then I'm gonna thin it out. All right. Bye. Thanks for your feedback. Maybe you can give me more feedback when you get back. Uh, ChatGPT is a text-based AI system, um, extremely advanced, and can do just about anything that you ask it to with pretty amazing levels of detail. I have a problem with it. I, as Hannah said, I do use it here and there, um, you know, as thought starting uh, exercises. It's great when I'm like, hey, give me five ideas uh, for a video about going to the mall. And it'll spit out. Does your mom know that you're around? 
I hadn't really thought about how I was going to hang them. I'd thought about it, but I kind of pushed that to, I'll worry about that when I'm done painting them. Well, I'm almost done painting with them, and it is now time to really think about how am I going to hang these. So I need to run to the art supply store and get hanging equipment. I always have the best talks with people in there. They're so awesome. I got my hanging equipment and a present for my husband because it's his birthday and his present did not come. So I got him a puzzle and I'm pretty ready to go home and get to hanging these paintings. I'm gonna use this as a makeup case. Okay. Oh, hangy item. Neutral tint. One of my favorite colors in by Windsor and Newton. And I used it up. I opened a new aqua board to test painting out the sides because I didn't know how it would work on the wood. And I did not want to ruin one of my finished paintings. Okay, so we're down to the wire. I am painting the sides of the paintings. They're pretty much done. There's a few finishing touches and then I'm gonna spray a sealant on them. I like to use a wax one, but I feel like that would be extremely time consuming for three paintings of this size because I use my hands and I don't know another technique and I don't, want to take the time to learn another technique. Then I'm also going to hang them. I watched a video on how to do it. It looks easy. I'm feeling confident about my ability to learn this new thing, but it does take time and I really want to spray them with a can that I've had for over a year. So I want to spray them by two o'clock today, just in case there's something wrong with the can, then I have time to go to the store and buy a new can of sealant. And then I drop them off tonight and, um, I woke up really anxious because uh, my days aren't necessarily quite as regimented. Like things have to happen at a certain point. If the dogs throw up, if if somebody in my family needs something, I have to be like, somebody else has to take care of this. And I'm not really used to doing that. I'm used to a more flexible schedule. So fingers crossed that everything just goes really smoothly today and I can get this done. Also, it's sunny, so I can spray outside without needing to, well, I'll probably still wear a mask, but like, I won't have to worry about getting sick or from the fumes or anything like that. So I could keep twiddling with it and tweaking it forever. Um, but I think that at a certain point, I'm gonna, just gonna have to decide that I'm done. Um, I still see so many imperfections. I don't know if you see them, it's just me who sees them, but I'm going to stop painting now. I'm gonna let everything dry. And then I'm gonna set up outside. I need to find a mask. I need to clear a spot in the yard for me to spray these. And then I'm going to spray them. You can still work on it after you've sprayed it. So that's that's a good thing. But I've never done this before. The technique seems a little complicated. So before I spray, I'm going to test on this. This has the core watercolor medium that makes it shiny on it. And I'm gonna spray it and see if it maintains that. Not that it matters, still doing it no matter what. I'll spray this and I'll spray this. I don't know why I'm spraying this. Well, it's an experiment. We can see, I'll just spray one side of it and see how it looks different. This is one of my thicker, less used masks. I don't think it's enough, but I don't know where the other one's on. Shake for 30 seconds. Okay, the fix it is says it dries within seconds, but I put my finger on it like five minutes later and it was still wet so that's not true but it is drying now about mm, 15 minutes later which isn't too bad it makes things shiny i don't think you can tell on here but so the bug was already shiny but the surrounding area wasn't i really love the matte finish on these pieces 
and I purposely made the bugs shiny, which also is not necessarily being picked up on the camera, but it's there. And now I realize like once I seal this, it's going to change the whole vibe. So I'm kind of sad about that, but I'd, I'd rather seal it than have it be unsealed. I do not expect there to be cat hair on my work at all. No, never. After sealing, I realized I had bought the wrong sized hooks and they were really difficult for me to put in, but my husband ended up helping me, was successful, and I put those little plastic wall separators on and got everything strung up and everything was good to go. <laughs> I did it! I've decided the price. I found out what all the bugs are called officially. Dropping off my work in like, I don't know, five minutes. And man, <laughs> I'm so exhausted. I've just been working, 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 and I'm so relieved and I'm so happy and I've just got the best feeling. It's like the, the feeling of accomplishment. <sighs> okay. Um, did I think through how I was going to transport them safely? No, I did not. All right, I'm heading out the door to go to my bug show opening. Super excited. And I know I won't remember to film once I get there, so. joining me and um, staying with me through this really long, complicated, extremely rewarding and fun process. And I hope to see you in many, many more videos to come. Bye. A ladybug landed on one of my bug paintings one day and I didn't put it in my video because it was already too long, but I left it in here for any diehards out there here at the end.